Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I'm preparing to check in on my oldest bin over here. It's the bin that I've got my so-called original population of red wigglers in. Because if some of you um, have been watching my channel, you already know that I had this little bit of an issue about a year ago where the majority of the original worms that I started with died off, but a tiny population survived. And I was able to foster that tiny population back into a fairly decent sized population in this system right here. And over the past 44 days, I've been trying to lure the worms out of their finished compost over to this side of the bin with feedings and moisture and fresh bedding and stuff like that. And just pretty much leaving that side to air dry a little bit, covered with paper only, so it should allow for a little bit of evaporation and drying. So I'm going to get this thing up on the bench so we can check it out, see how it's coming along. So let me get a glove, move this over to the table, and I'll meet you there. So just a quick rundown of what this all means. Its age is quite evident. These three phases of the uh, system's life cycles just shows how long it was composting, taking 14 feedings on during that time, after which there was a period of no feedings, foraging, and what's happening now is the migration, 44 days in progress, um, with four feedings applied. And the, the migration is expanded out here to better describe um, how things happened. So like the first feeding of the four happened here on day zero. Eight days later, we came in for feeding number two. And then we started getting into this 12-day pattern. So feeding three went in after 12 days, another 12 days for the last feeding, which was the fourth feeding to try to spur on this migration. And today, this is just an open bracket indicating that anything could happen. I don't know what's going to end up getting filled in here. You know, I guess there is always that possibility that the migration could have completed, but I don't know. It just seems like we've been um, noticing that the material might have started out a little bit more damp than it um, should have or could have. <laughs> so it remained very damp and cozy for the worms to stay out in this stuff. Because every time we would check in here, there was still a good number of worms. I was even trying to sort of rate the dryness level and the number of remaining worms. So I was kind of... Um, putting together these little notes about still very damp or still kind of damp and then there was still some and there was still a few and then that's I was trying to describe the, the dryness levels and the number of worms remaining and it just seemed like a hokey scale so I didn't want to prolong doing that <laughs> so I gave up on that I guess we'll decide how damp it is and how how many lingering worms remain in this stuff after we've inspected it, but I've got, already got a feeling that we're probably going to be, you know, continuing this migration for a while longer. I Meaning I'll probably have to go up to the um, kitchen to get them some more food scraps to, um, you know, keep this movement moving, you know. Got to keep this side of the bin the most interesting for the worms to want to be in. Keep the dampness over, over there um, going on as opposed to what we're doing here, which is just allowing it to dry gradually. I guess one of the main scales for me is the crumbliness it defines to me how fine the material is because to me it seems like a, a lot of this stuff is so clumpy because of excess moisture. It's a, just sort of a weird um, little catch-22. It's like it's it's like you'd like to be able to dry this stuff off but just by, by its own nature the castings really hold on to their moisture quite efficiently which is one of the things everyone loves about this stuff. But when it comes time to, you know, let the stuff dry, I mean, you got to admit, when I when we first came in here, the newspaper that we saw in here was tucked up pretty tight up against the plastic and, you know, even up against this little um, divider wall here. So I definitely made a, a good effort to not allow a lot of ventilation to occur. So whatever moisture was um, exiting, this material had to penetrate the paper for the most part. So perhaps that was um, something I could have done differently. I, I always kind of reflect on how I did things and how I could have done them differently. And that certainly seems like one of them, you know, that could have been done differently. Maybe allow for a little bit more airflow beneath the paper coverings as opposed to covering it up so tightly. But I guess that segues nicely into why I covered up so tightly last time I was in here. Well, last time I was in here was not when we came in here together to shoot video. I came in here shortly thereafter because that last feeding that we put in here started to make a little bit of a, a stink and it seemed like it was drawing bugs so I, I laid some more bedding on to cover it up better and then I put down the diatomaceous earth here to you know hopefully snag any of those little insects that were already coming by anyway to 
take an interest in this stuff. So whatever, I just want to take care of uh, one thing at a time here. So let's just get this material aerated. I'm starting to think that the replacement of the paper covering can be done so in a much um, more loose way to allow for a little bit more air flow beneath it. And I just can't resist, you know, taking this opportunity to try to crumble some of this stuff if I can. Why not, right? Here's a, um, a cocoon in this little pile of material. There's another cocoon there. A lot of times if I just slow down, I start to see them all over the place. It's just that when I'm, you know, rifling through this stuff really quick, trying to, you know, stir it all up and get to the next thing, it um, just doesn't afford enough time to be able to see them you know but they're they're all there you know right there's another one sticking right on top or who knows maybe it's the same one we saw earlier <laughs> so it's these scraps of bedding that i believe might be what actually sits inside a lot of these clumps a lot of times when i open up one of these clumps the castings fall away once it's dried enough and then within it is some sort of a piece of material like this right that's why i'm so suspicious of how much more stuff like this is still floating around in here all clumped up within a piece you know like a little pile of castings it's almost like um, a snowflake right a snowflake i believe needs a, a piece of dust before the water molecules can start piling onto it or something so it needs some sort of a backbone some sort of structure and i think all these clumpy chunks occur because there's still large um, pieces of lingering bedding or food or whatever usually bedding it's a piece of cardboard we saw there but that's usually what i see and until it dries and you know comes free of its little its little prison inside of this pile of material it's not going to get chewed on it's not going to get utilized so this dampness i think to a certain degree um prevents certain materials from getting broken down when they're encapsulated like that at some point when this stuff flows freely and is really granular it'll It'll easily pass through a screen and then all that stuff can get pulled out, but more drying will be needed before that can occur, obviously. Every time I bump into a, a fairly dry piece of material, I feel like I should have, you know, somehow gotten it sunken down better. I just thought a dry piece of material down low might suck up moisture too, but this should do. Definitely nice stuff and the worms seem to agree because they're throughout it. <laughs> So as best, of, best as we've tried to, you know, try to lure them over, you know, a lot of them are still holding out in the old stuff, you know. All right, whatever. Mission A is complete, and I got a feeling we're just going to have to keep this continuing. I'm almost wondering if today might be a good day to actually perform a haul out. Maybe, um... Little flying insects down in here. Yikes. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, the cabbage I put in here for them last time, the bugs seem to take a shine to this stuff because I don't know. The uh, Hopefully, this diatomaceous earth was able to snag a few of them. I mean, I see a few, but it doesn't seem that bad. Holy cow, look at all the castings that are piling up down in here. <laughs> There's a lot of worms in here, too. I just always worry about not. Um, hauling out worms and just letting the process continue, continue, continue. I don't know, like, are, are some worms going to feel that it gets very crowded over here and then they start going back to the material I was trying to get them out of? Some of this paper on the very top surface is a little bit dry, but everything else has got a nice moisture level to it. Let's check out what's happening down here. So the stuff they got... Last feeding and the feeding prior was this coleslaw mix of shredded carrots and shredded cabbage. And what came in here prior to that, I don't remember. But, you know, I am definitely prepared to move worms out if I wanted to because I've got a uh, couple bins that have been pre-built for more, more than a month now. They've just been sitting around. Every couple weeks I just check in, give them a squirt of water, make sure they're staying nice and moist and cozy and... I'm sure the worms would enjoy getting into a nice new space but it also seems like there's plenty of room in here to you know let this process continue i wonder if this can almost count as sort of a wedge if you just continue to um 
you know, pile up the finished stuff on this side, let it dry, and then keep, you know, trying to entice them to the other edge. In a way, it almost seems like it, and if you, you know, at some point just pull out the completed finished castings from that side and just keep expanding the space that they occupy over here, I could see that kind of, you know, working as almost like a little bit of a conveyor sort of a thing. So, th this is my, uh, this is my dilemma here, you know, do we, do we actually pull all this stuff out, get these little guys working on a brand new bin, and then, you know, whatever comes out of this, comes out of this eventually, and we just set up a fresh station over on this side to keep trying to lure them out, or do we just expand this further and, you know, keep bringing them over? I, I gotta say, there is a certain amount of appeal to doing it in such a way that I don't have to get a second bin started, everything can stay in here. Um, you know, my, my shelf is basically full <laughs> where I keep all my active bins. So to now, you know, spawn off a new bin and then still have this old one trying to wind it down. It'd be nice if I could somehow, um, I, I don't know, maybe sort of have that environment here, which I normally don't do. You know, usually the whole system gets completed, worms get hauled out, castings are harvested, so on and so forth. I've never really, um, tried to treat one of these systems as sort of an ongoing continuous sort of a system. Ah, oh, decisions, decisions, what do we do? Hmm. So now this time, I'm not gonna forget the coffee, I promise. Last time we fed, I had a, <laughs> a filter like this, full of used coffee on the side, and after we finished, we um, noticed, oh, we never gave it to the worms. So what you see here is a pretty good sized carrot, which started, I guess, going bad. Hmm. A soiled paper towel. I've also got worm chow, I've also got pulverized eggshell, got my pre-made bedding that we could use to expand this space with, so I think we'll do just that. We're gonna, we're ta we're gonna opt for that um, option to keep trying to build this out, keep, I guess, reducing this in size. I guess the part of that I don't like is making it deeper by piling it in further, making it deeper, it seems less likely to shed its moisture. Hmm. I don't know, I guess we could just pile in a little bit more stuff in here um, and maybe not change the real estate allocation so much. Gosh, there's so many cocoons in here. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure if the camera's catching it, but they're all over the place. All right. Why don't we just make ourselves a little bit of space so we can give them that nice big carrot, but we'll put it all on the far side just like we usually do. And... Even though this might look like it's some sort of a fancy divider, it's not really much of anything anymore because it was already re really down to just this top piece. Most of what was down lower had already been consumed by the worms, so it's just that part of it that was sticking out that remained. So it's really just there as sort of a uh, just a little bit of an indicator of where we're trying to, you know, delineate the finished castings from the feeding area or the baiting area or whatever you want to call it and a good number of worms in here cocoons everywhere I look <laughs> they're all over the place all right well we'll try to recycle these we'll try to keep these as a sort of a visual aid to let us see how big of a space we've been um, creating for these little guys I don't know which way did I push it we pushed it in this way right so if we did want to increase the space just a little bit, I suppose we could, you know? How much are we changing its depth by? A little tiny bit. Probably not too much. Hopefully it doesn't interfere with its ability to continue drying. I guess we'll try to fold that top covering piece of newspaper up a little bit so it's not so thorough and doesn't go all the way out um, from wall to wall to, you know, prevent evaporation. Maybe even... I don't know, I guess we could leave it off if we wanted to, but I prefer to have some sort of coverings. So, let's um, let's start moving things over, because it is this far side that I usually like to use as the place to put in the, um, the fresh stuff, so that what's butted up to the material that I'm trying to lure these little guys out of is the, the most worked and mo most, um, probably the most appealing to these little guys. Even though the fresh supply of food over here is probably also quite appealing. A lot of the fresh um, food that goes in also brings with it some moisture like the cabbage and carrots they got last time probably did. How much this carrot here is going to provide as far as moisture, I don't know. But we'll see. 
there is a good number of worms in here. We could easily launch a, a worm bin pretty much any any time if we wanted to. Sometimes I wonder if I'm making the right choice here, but I don't know. I'm just a little limited on space and keeping this process going. Um, just seems like the most appealing. And I kind of like that whole idea of allowing this whole thing to remain connected as the, all those cocoons gradually, you know, hatch and the babies start moving out and the stuff material dries, continues getting worked down in the process while it's still being occupied. And that doesn't prevent them from starting into a nice fresh, you know, pile of stuff on the other end of the bin. So it seems like a pretty cool um, setup. So I'm probably going to just experiment with this for a little while in this bin. And, um, and that's that. So let's bring over my interesting pre-made bedding. I just, I'm looking down in here and I, I don't know if it's visible on the camera, but there's this kind of hazy, like a mold, kind of a fur thing going on over here, <laughs> growing down here in the bin within the moisture. So let's grab some of that. It's probably stuff that the worms love to nibble on right there, right? And then we've got a soil paper towel. Nice foundation for today's feeding. At this point, my conscience is clear. Putting in a big frozen block of ice is fine because there's nothing, nobody there to be bothered by it, right? No worms there. We pretty much evacuated that whole, almost half of the system, right, <laughs> to build this. So we definitely, um, I don't think we really took up that much more room over here, did we? Oh, you know, if that is going to become the spot, right, let's... Let's plop these in before it gets difficult to do so. <laughs> so cheesy, right? Let's, let's go with the whole concept of further expanding their space. Not only that, but I like to sprinkle coffee down into other materials. And this uh, prepared bedding is the ideal stuff to, to mix it in with. Now, you saw me sprinkle in the crushed eggshells we can give them a little more of that too and then I've got this other stuff here this is pulverized seeds pulverized grains it's like a little you know, homemade chow I've been worm chow I've been trying and it seems like the worms are taking to it quite nicely we'll give give them a little bit of this too hopefully it's not going to become like some sort of like a flying insect um, haven although well, you can see flying insects hanging out down here so um, there is room for improvement here, but I'm, not, I'm trying not to panic just by seeing that going on. It is what it is. I'm not going to sweat it. And I think we're pretty much done here. So let's see. To cover up, we're going to uh, we're going to be rearranging the size of things here, right? So we've just pretty much um, I don't know. I think we added at least 50% to this thing, maybe. I don't know. It does seem like a pretty good size um, increase to the space that the worms have to be in. So we'll cover up here like so, but this, geez, it's so tempting just to leave it uncovered, but I don't know. Seems like something should be on here and we'll just stick with this piece of paper for now. And I've got some more of this diatomaceous sort earth. Of, I've got a whole bag of this stuff. So I might come back in here at another point and treat this upper surface with more of that so that as the flying insects cut come and go into this material that they've kind of become familiar with and accustomed to, you know, being in, that stuff should trap them and, you know, knock them out. So uh, I'm not prepared to sprinkle any of that right now, so I'll be, you know, treating other systems with that as well. So I'll make sure I take care of this at that time. So that's pretty much it. I've got a few things to clean off and put away, but I'm not going to keep you around for that. Before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. If you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.